have any questions, please feel free to uh, put your comments and stuff in the uh, workshop Discord server, Discord channel. And if I'm going too fast or too slow, feel free to indicate that and I will uh, change my pacing for uh, to accommodate you guys. So let's get started with Unity. So along with like Unreal Engine and Godot, uh, Unity is one of the uh, many game engines that were provided and one of like one of the many first ones that were created to allow people to create a bunch of games and like share it online with different platforms. So some of the games that you, you might have seen uh, made with uh, Unity or might ha not have known that were made with Unity are a game such as Hollow Knight, Subnautica, Fall Guys, Genshin Impact. So those all have used Unity Engine in their uh, development and uh, whenever you start playing them, they were uh, a portion of their game or most of them were created using Unity. So to further on, uh, a bit of Unity history. So the, co the company that wanted to, yes, yeah, Subnautica was a really good game. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was free like a few years ago, which was a nice place uh, for you guys to download. Not sure if it still is. So it was the company was founded in August uh, 2nd, 2004, which was pretty long ago. Um, that's almost when I was born in a place called Kofigen, uh, Denmark. Uh, it was mainly founded by David Hedgelson uh, and two of his um, two of his buddies. And the initial product launched uh, was on June 6, 2005. The, uh, the purpose of launching Unity was aiming to uh, demo, uh, democratize uh, game development by making it accessible for more developers. So basically, they want more people like gaming and um, mobile, like um, mobile apps were just starting to get more popularity at this time. And they wanted a lot of uh, more developers and more like people that want, had visions to like work with this thing. And uh, right after their launch, the next year, Unity was named runner-up for the best use of Mac OS X graphics category in Apple's Inc., Apple Designs Awards, and they won many awards past that. So just, uh, just a table of contents on what we will going, be going over today is first, the creation of a project. Uh, I assume most of you already have Unity downloaded. Uh, the version, I think, should be an LTS support, so long-term support. Um, so make sure that you guys have that open. Uh, this is basically creating your very first project in Unity. I will be doing a 3D game uh, template. Uh, next, we'll be exploring some of the tools on the engine that you will be working with. So working with like the layout and like some of the transformation tools and all that. Uh, number three is playing with objects. So basically when you create Unity, you're gonna have a scene that you can work on. It's basically like a template where you can move and drag stuff along. If you have any, if you played any like games like Genshin or stuff like The Sims, you'll see something similar to that where you can build your own game together. Uh, it's a bit like depending on how. Um, yes, uh, Genshin with the the teapot thing. I forgot what it was called. Uh, but basically, you can move objects along, and then you can drag and drop stuff like that. So number four, you'll basically start creating your character, uh, figure out some like materials and design aspects. And scripting will be probably the largest portion of this workshop. We're, we'll be using uh, with C++, C Sharp code, sorry, uh, with uh, Microsoft Visual Studio to make uh, a functional player that will, um, that will move based on what you need. And finally, uh, when we have time, we'll have obstacles, basically, how your player can interact with their surroundings. So other than that, let's jump right into Unity and let's begin. <laughs> We sent a reminder to download it. Oh no. Uh, that might take a while just to download if I'm not mistaken. So I'll give you guys like a minute just to open up. Uh, once you download Unity, you'll have something called the Unity Hub, which then you can open. And then it'll have this part where I'm assuming you guys have your IDs. Uh, just, I'm going to give you guys a small break. If you guys didn't uh, log into your Unity account, you can do so right now. So hopefully now you guys have like this uh, project open. Uh, so what we'll start first is by adding, um, start a new project. And over here, we will have the 3D option right here, able to select. So this is the one that we will be using. Uh, for names, let's just go with uh, Curious 
uh, work up. Whoops, I need to capitalize that. Oh, and then basically over here that you can choose which, uh, where do you want to save this project? I usually have one on my desktop that I can just save stuff in and then you guys can use it. So right here, it will, uh, once these two are selected, you can simply uh, click create and it might take a while, but sooner or later it will be loaded. <laughs> So once you guys get that part done, you'll probably be faced uh, with um, with a screen something like this. So this is basically the general layout that you will see for uh, Unity. So what you have here is uh, select to me. Oh geez, okay. <laughs> so basically, there are several components that you want to see right here. So. In the middle, we have our scene. Basically, this is where all your objects and all your like items are going to be placed, whenever you have that. Uh, your hierarchy is over here. This is basically a list of everything that's going to be in uh, your Unity uh, like um, scene. So if I create a new object, there's going to be like create objects, create 3D objects, effects, lights, audio, stuff like that that you guys can do in the future. But this is basically your main fo area focus, and this is like basically a list of what's gonna, a uh, list of the uh, items that are in this place. Next, uh, beside the scene, you'll see another part where it is game. So in the scene, you can see that there is a main camera. So this is one of the objects that you will be using in every game for Unity. So this is basically what the user sees when they actually run the game. So this is your scene, and this is your game. So over here, we can see that the camera is actually pointing in a direction. You can see what the main camera is pointing down here whenever you click main camera. And the other part is directional light. This is just lighting. Well, we won't use this in our um, workshop today because that gets into a lot of, once you go into a lot of design and like uh, level making, which you guys should uh, join. I think there's another uh, workshop for intermediate for a level generation and all that, but you guys definitely should go into. So this is the scene and game. Uh, the asset store is something we won't go over today, but it's really useful once you uh, keep using it. So you guys can go into Unity, download some of the package, some of the design and stuff that they already made, and some of the tools, which are always nice. And down here, you'll see you'll have a project and console. So over here is project. These are where all your assets are, where you will save all your scripts and stuff like that. This is basically your scene. This is the sample scene that we are looking at right now. And over here, we have the console. This is basically when there's an error in the code or like whenever you're printing out something to the main, um, to the front, this is basically where uh, the line will be. So like, if you have like Python, one, this is basically where um, all the print statements happen and all that. And over here is inspector. So inspector is basically something that is very useful uh, for all the values. So once you see, I, if I click main camera and directional light, the inspector is always different. So these are the values that it gives. So there's like their transform, which is part of every um, object, which is where this object is placed. Uh, there's the camera. So basically these are just basically um, a lot of variables with their own values. So stuff like the position of the camera, zero, one, uh, negative 10, stuff like that. Uh, their rotation and the scale of it. So we will be using this a lot throughout this um, throughout this uh, workshop, and I'll show you guys how uh, everything works out here. So over here, uh, one of the best ways to start off with Unity is to have a setup that you really like. So with these layouts, it might be hard, a bit hard to navigate some areas, especially I want to see what's exactly happening in my game while I'm playing with my scene. So one of the ways is I like to, you can take these tabs just like a normal Chrome tab, but the thing is you can drag and drop them. So basically you can put them down here. I can take this and put it all the way here. So it's actually really simple just to play around with it. So I can just drag project. I think I can put it right here. Uh, I, game, I like game and console down here, stuff like that. Uh, I think I can turn this part down a bit. Actually, I'll put project so here, oops. We can push that down a bit. And then once you guys get like a, some kind of um, format that you guys like, I usually like something like this, where you can have the, sorry. Uh, I can see the scene as well as the game. 
And on the side, I have my sample scene. Uh, this is my hierarchy right here where I can see all the objects. So it's right beside uh, my scene. So I can see all the objects inside it. And then down here, I have my game that runs with the project and console. And then on the side, I have my inspector. So if you have a layout that you, uh, if you have a layout that you like, feel free to go and uh, save a layout. So basically, I like this layout, and then I can just call it something on here. So default two or something, and I can save it right here. So my main one, this uh, looks something like this. This is the one I usually work with. Uh, these are some of the other stuff that you might go into. So project settings is one of the ones you will see later. I'll show you how to get that soon. Uh, that's basically, you'll be able to see some uh, various tools that are happening here. So let's start with uh, playing around with your scene. So what I want you guys to do right now is go into your hierarchy, right click, and then let's just make a 3D object, shall we? So the first thing let's do, let's gonna do is let's make a cube. Let's zoom in a bit. So in the scene, you can navigate it in various ways. You have the scroll wheel that lets you zoom in and out. You have your right click that allows you to move around, look around the view. And you have your left click, which you can select objects with. One of the fun things that uh, Unity allows us to do is while you're panning around with right click, you can actually use your WASD uh, keys on the side to just Move around the move around the um, area. See, you can just if I want to go back, front, side, side. It's very easy to navigate around. On the top, there are several tools. So there's the hand that allows you to go around. If you uh, look on the top left, this one's the one where you can just click. So this one's the one that uh, lets you move your object around. So once you click this one, you can select an object and then you can move it along the X, Y, and Z um, axis. If you want to view this object in a certain axis, uh, on the top of the scene right here, there is actually uh, a movement field that you can go, like I want to see mine in the Y and X, uh, y and X view. So if I put it right here, I can actually see it from this angle only. I can shift around whenever I want, but I like this one the best. So over here, you can see th there's the two arrows right here. If you move around a bit more, you get to see the arrow on the back that lets you move the Z. Another thing is on the side, you can basically see over here that the transformations are moving. So whenever I move this thing, you can see that it's actually shifting the values on the side. So if I shift the X axis, you can see that the X is moving from one, let's go negative to negative 3.7. The next uh, tool on the top uh, left is the rotational wheel. So basically, when you select this, you can rotate your object on the X and Y scale, as well as the Z scale, however you want. You can just drag it in the middle as well and rotate it whichever way you want. The next one on the side, you can see there's a small square with an arrow. This will increase the scale of certain axes of the object. So let's just go back to here. You can edit these in the inspector as well. You can change all these back to zero. So this is, this is non-rotated at all. And then what you can do is you can play with these. So you can make this longer that way, longer that way. And if you drag the middle, you can make it bigger as a whole. So these are just some of the tools. If you use this, this is not something that we usually use. If you press the one right beside the one with the box, this gives all four of, <laughs> of these tools in the same one. You can move it up and down, rotate it however you want, and you can increase the size of this. So these are just some of the main tools that you will see here. Now let's play around with this cube, shall we? So a good way to have a good uh, organization is to always have um, your project area neat. So one, some of the things that we will be working with the most here are prefabs. Um, prefabs is just basically if you create a ball and you want to replicate this ball whenever you want, you have a prefab. Uh, the next part is the scripts. You want to save your scripts somewhere. Oh, sorry, how do you rotate? Uh, right here, if you go up to the top right, uh, the third slot, there's one that's, uh, that looks like a circle, that two arrows like a recycling thing. Once you click an object, you can drag these around and you can go around and rotate stuff. So over here, and the last one, no problem. Uh, so we can create folders in here. I like to have three more other than your scene. So the first one will definitely be scripts. 
This will help you save your scripts. Uh, the next one I will create is your prefabs. Basically what this is, is you can save a certain object with a certain type of property. So if I want this uh, square to be this scale, uh, this is a weird number to say, but uh, if I want to say, I want this uh, cubed as uh, this with these properties, I can just put it in and I can just always drag and drop these into my uh, scene whenever I want. The next one and the final one I will be using uh, not much today is materials. So basically what materials are is you can have shaded colors, green, uh, blue, stuff like that, just to make them like that. So in the materials, let's start by right clicking this folder and we can actually go and create our first material. So we can create the material. So I like to name mine. Always have a good, whenever you're making a project, always keep it organized. So I'm gonna call it material. And let's say this is the one I want to put on my player. So over here we can, see that there are many of many different settings. You can play around with these, especially what you want. But especially what I want to do is just change the color. So this material, let's just say will be purple. So once this is saved, let's make another one. Let's create another material right on the side. Uh, let's change this one. Uh, let's put this one green. And actually let's put this one red because let's put this one as an obstacle. So if you want to rename something, you can just press F4. So material, uh, let's put obstacle then. So these are two materials taken. And just to show you how they work, uh, the inspector is actually really easy to use if you want to drag and drop something. So let's just say, I want this to be an obstacle. So I'm going to take the material obstacle and drag it onto this cube. And you see now the cube is actually red. So, uh, sorry, give me a sec. That's just basically a quick demonstration of the material. And for most objects, if you have a visible object in some way, you'll have a box collider. Uh, I'll get this once we start the obstacles, but this is basically the prefab uh, materials that you might use. Uh, just gonna take some time. If you guys have any other questions, please feel free to ask because after this, I will start creating the first player. Actually, I'm gonna go over something else really quick first, sorry. Um, one of the things that you might wanna know is Unity is actually really good with uh, physics. So if you go into your inspector of the cube, you can actually input something called, if you go down here, press the cube, uh, inspector, add component. Down here, there's an add component at the bottom. Oh, why is my scene just a sad dark grid? It's very default. Um, could you send a picture? Uh, I'm not entirely sure what it might look like, but I'll just try to see and fix it. <laughs> um, so if you go to add, um, huh. that looks, might be with main camera. Do you have, uh, if you go into main camera and you see background, uh, is there like, clear flags, do you see like something like solid color depth only, stuff like that? It might be that. Actually, no, it doesn't seem like that. Uh, let's see, whoops, let me keep it at that. Hmm. Oh, um, wait, actually, no, I'm actually quite curious. What did, why is your screen like that? Did you click that? No. Huh. Not entirely sure. Can you still like create objects and stuff with it? Oh, how do you add the materials to the cube? So Leo, if you have uh, just uh, update me later on if you're able to uh, work it out. Uh, McKellar, how to add the object um, material to the cube. If you go into the cube um, and select this object, you can actually just take that material. Let's just go with the player one. And I can actually just drag and drop it in and it'll change. Does that work for you? So let's go back to the obstacle. I can just take this material that I've made and I'll put it right back in. Hmm, it's not working to drag and drop. Kind of odd. Actually, let's see. Okay, um, try this. So 
I made a new cube right here. If you go down to this section, so default, it says something default material here. If I go down and I can probably go and uh, select material, if you right click, actually it doesn't work here. Uh, select material. Hmm. It's not working with this part. Might, uh, let me check. I'll come back to that, but I'm not sure why it's not working for you. Uh, give me a sec. Material properties. Set. Hmm. Definitely not sure why it's not working for you. Usually the drag and drop should work on a uh, normal basis. Does anyone else have that issue or is it just um, Keller? Uh, give me a sec. Uh, once we go to, into our next break, I'll actually try to figure that one out for you. Uh, so I'll delete that one for now. I'll come back to you for that one. Um, so the next part is if you want to add a component, uh, you can search up something called rigid body. This is basically, don't add the uh, rigid body 2D. Uh, this will be the rigid body um, for 2D games. Uh, basically what you have right here is basically the physics. You're adding a physics to the object. So basically if I start the game, on the top there's um, a triangle, basically a play button, there's a pause button. So if you ever uh, click the play button, it'll show what happens to the object when you start. So what happens with this is that the rigid body, because there's on the side, you can see that there's something called use gravity. It's basically letting it fall. So if I unselect that, then this probably will stay up. So in this way, yeah. So the, uh, the object will not uh, move because of this. So this is one of the ways that you can easily apply gravity to some of the objects that you uh, create. Underneath rigid body are the uh, constraints. So there's something called freeze position and freeze rotation. So these are some things that you can do if your object only falls downwards or it doesn't spin when it drops. So let's just say I have this object right here and I decide to make it a bit bigger. So if I decide to make this longer and let's set this at zero, zero and zero, let's put the rotation back to zero, that's normal. And basically, if we go around, sorry, and let's create another, actually, let's just unblock this cube again, and let's move it up, and then let's, let's change the rotation really quickly. All right. So as you can see here, there's a cube on the side, and then if we go into this cube and add rigid body, if we add gravity, let's see what happens when it contacts with another object with rigid body. Oops, oh, yeah, sorry, this one also has gravity on it. If I take gravity off, let's see what happens. See, so, oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, which template did you choose when starting, sorry? Uh, the 3D one. Uh, on your, um, yeah, no problem. So basically, let's go to this red one then, and then if I freeze the position X, Y, and Z, Let's see what happens. I'm also going to freeze the rotation really quickly for all three of them. This is what happens when you ride in the game. As you can see, this, this cube just falls down. If I were to take this cube and freeze, let's say, the rotation of these, this would probably just stay like this. See, for this one, it actually didn't fall down uh, fully. That's because I froze the rotation on this cube right here. That's why the rotation, uh, these are not changed. So I can unfreeze that once I'm done. And the reason that um, if I look at the red, red block and if I don't freeze the position or rotation, the reason why this small block moves this large block, block sorry, just like that, as you can see on the screen here, uh, is because of the mass of the objects. So cube one is one, has a mass of one, cube two has a mass of one, so they're basically the same uh, same size and same mass. But let's just say if I put cube one, let's 
change the mass. This is something that you can always do, change the mass, let's just say a thousand for some no apparent reason. See, there's gonna be a big change in what we see. See, so this cube has a lot more mass than the smaller cube now. So it's gonna be changed of, it's gonna be a lot harder for the smaller cube to move it. And if we keep going, I'm pretty sure this cube will just fall off due to gravity. So this is just basically a short little example of uh, how gravity is used in Unity. So up next, let's start by creating our first player. So I'm gonna delete that, delete that. Okay, that's great. All right, that works now. So in that case, let's start off with our first ever character. So I'm just gonna reset really quickly. Let's see where my main camera is. All right, so let's go into a scene where we can see the zero, zero position. So I'm gonna take this cube and delete that for now. We won't be using that. And basically what we're gonna create is, if you go into right click your hierarchy, you'll see uh, create a 3D object and then you're gonna select the capsule. So it should be the third one there. Oh, the default cube. Sometimes a Unity comes with it, sometimes it doesn't, um, but usually I don't really use that default cube, but it's actually a pretty nice thing to have. So over here, I'm just gonna reset my position. So I created a capsule at zero, zero, and zero. See the transformations on the side? They're zero, zero, and zero. The rotations are zero and the scale is one, one, and one. So what we have here is our very first player. Let's do something fun and give it a, let's give it a skin really quickly. Let's make it bright purple. On the side, uh, we have the transform, mesh render, and capsule collider. These are just, uh, this is gonna be used in the obstacles later on, but this will be the player that we use. And then on the top, you can rename him into player really quickly, and that will work greatly. And to begin, let's go and create our first script. So let's, if you want, uh, quickly right click on the scripts folder that you created. And let's create a C sharp script, a new C sharp script. And let's call this player. Okay. Give me one sec. All right, so once you do that, you'll open up Visual Studio. Sorry. Yeah, how does one add physics again? Oh, don't worry. Uh, so let's just go into player really quick. Let's mess around with him a bit. So once you go into player, you'll have your inspector, which are all the properties of this object. So you have your scene over on the top left, your hierarchy right here, basically your object, and then your inspector is where you'll be controlling all the objects. So all the properties of it will be seen over here. So I'm gonna do something really quickly, add component and add a rigid body. So a uh, rigid body right here, and you'll see it has many properties that you can change yourself. So you have the mass, drag, the angular drag, the use, use gravity, this is one of the big ones, do you wanna use gravity or not? Uh, you have your constraints, especially with the freeze position uh, and freezing ro rotation and stuff like that. Uh, so have you gotten it, Leo? So basically now, if, now that the player has rigid body, we can just simply click play and he'll just, you know. Oh, I forgot, I did not select use gravity. If we take him right now, he'll be soon dropping in three, two, one, and he's gone. So that's just basically how rigid body works. If you accidentally add a different um, component, you can always go to the side. There's a three dot and you can just really quickly uh, move component and it'll be gone. So once you create, um, once you start creating the player, uh, you can open up this script. So right here is the one that I will be using. And this is basically what you'll see. So it might take a bit of time for some of you to load that in. So really quickly, I'll give you guys like a one minute, uh, time, one minute in time just to let you guys work on it and open it up. All right, that should be good for now. Uh, so over here we have whatever, we, ha we have this thing on top. So what these are, are basically your libraries for whenever you're using Unity. So basically Unity Engine is one of the biggest ones where all the, um, all the types of objects are used. And something that you might see here is Mono Behavior. So Mono Behavior is what lets you actually drag and drop these things around in the Unity Engine. 
And mine is green right now. I had this issue when we when I first started using Unity 2. Uh, I'm not sure if some of you have it. You might or might not. Or if you run in it, into it in the future, this mode of behavior will be white. That means that your game engine doesn't actually recognize it. So if it doesn't recognize it, you can head back to your game engine. You can go up to Edit. Uh, if you go down and find, let's see, Preferences down here, and open it, you can see that you have your, uh, let's see, External Tools. So yeah, you will find your External Tools here. So in your Preferences, click that, and up here there's an External Script Editor. So what yours might be selected right now, you can do this right now just for the future. It says Open by File Extension. What you can do is select your Visual Studio Community um, version right down here. Once you have that selected, you can X out of it. And then once that is done, you can go over to um, Visual Studios and then you'll have your solutions. You can click Solution Explorer. If you just want to use help, you'll find it right here and stuff will start loading in. So basically what we have here is class. So Unity is using C Sharp, which is a pretty object oriented programming style. So you have your first class and the class that you have is player. So if you ever go here and you're trying to edit your um, script later on, if you want to change that name, make sure that you always change the name right up here because this is the only one that it will recognize. So this is the one that it will change. If you change this one, it won't change this one. So make sure that this one is um, these two match. Another thing on the side is if you ever click on a script, Unity has this really nice feature on the editor where it immediately opens the script right beside it. So you can see that everything here is already what I have in this editor uh, in this Visual Studio tab right now. So what we have here, whenever you start Unity, whatever, whenever you create a new script with the Unity, you'll have two little sections right below. So one of them is going to be void start and the other one is going to be void update. So what void start is, is basically methods that are called. So basically void start is happens whenever you start the play. So if ever, whenever I click play on my actual Unity um, engine, if I click play, this will run at the start. Void update updates every second. So every second that every frame, sorry, not every second, every frame that occurs whenever the game starts, you know, be, you, uh, void update will be called once. So this is basically where all the movement will be uh, worked with. So let's begin with a simple code. So what we have here is, uh, as we know, a lot of people always start with hello world. So let's begin with a simple print function into the actual command line. So the print uh, in Python, which is another um, I use, I'm not sure what it is for Java, but we usually have print in uh, in those types, but for Unity, we have something called debug.log. This is basically the equivalent to print, and inside you can just print hello world. Let's just put that there. And then similar to most uh, C languages, make sure you have your semicolon at the end or else it won't run properly. So it is a semicolon uh, coding language that, so make sure you remember that. If you ever have like any errors in it, uh, especially syntax errors, it might be because of this. So as we know, with void start, debug log will start, and this will print hello world onto your console. So make sure you save it up here. Make sure you always click save. And then once you come back, Unity will update based on the script that you have. And then whenever I press start, so I'm going to open console on my side right here. And then I'm going to click play, and you should see at the very start, it says, Oops, sorry, give me a sec. Oh, sorry, wait, my bad, my bad. I am very sorry. <laughs> yeah. uh, this won't actually run until you actually uh, create it. Uh, sorry about that. So what you have to do, I forgot about this small part. When you actually want to use the script, make sure that you always have it as, if debug does not contain a de definition for log. Just that player, hmm. Uh, make sure that uh, the um, capitalization is correct for these ones. I think unless you're you don't have the libraries already logged in. If you want, you can send me a picture. I can see if I can figure it out this time. Maybe. Um, 
so if you want to actually run your script, I forgot about this one part. So you actually have to, like the material, drag it into the object. So in the inspector right here for player, I'm actually going to drop the script in for player. So over here, you can now see that in the inspector, on the, in the components, there's actually a place that says script, player script right here. So now if we run it, it should on the console say, hello world. So over here, we can see that it has created a new thing right here that basically says, oh, this is what happened by the script. Because whatever's in your project right here isn't actually in your uh, game right now. So basically you have to make sure that it's in the game. So basically take the player and drop it into the inspector for uh, this player object. Um, yeah, make sure uh, log is capitalized. So uh, C sharp is actually a cap uh, case sensitive language. So just make sure that that thing is capitalized. Uh, does it work for you guys now? So just one another example, I'm just going to do this again, and you'll see Hello World is created again right here. So this is how this works. Uh, this is how Start works. And let's just take this and let's put debug.hello world into update. So every frame that happens, it will call Hello World. So if we go over here, make sure you always save the project. So Visual Studio has this really nice feature that if you type something in and you make an edit, the side will have be yellow. So what you want to do right here is make sure that it's saved so it turns green. Once you re-enter into your project, it will make sure it loads. Now let's see what happens if I call it every update. So I'm just going to start the project again. And you'll see that console has a lot of hello worlds now. Uh, sorry for those that don't have a strong PC to like keep up with this. But every frame that happens, this will be printed out. So hopefully this gives you a basic like definition of what is uh, what this place is, how void start and void update are. And basically what we're going to start with is we're going to start with something called uh, the transform. So we have our player here. And the biggest part of every object that you'll see is the transform that it is at. So you have your position, your rotation, and as well as the scale for each of these objects. So what you can do for these ones is if I take this, let's just move it somewhere else. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this uh, player depending on where it is. So if I go back here and go into start, I can do something really quickly called transform. So if I go into transform, this is the uh, transform that you see right up here. If I actually go into position, so every time I do this, you can see that like uh, in object-oriented programming, I first get the transform of the object, then I go into the position. Then what I can do is something called a new vector three. So in Unity, everything, all the positions of all the objects are performed using vector three. So you want to make a new vector three right here. So make sure that case sensitive is right. Sorry, I tend to type the O before the T for some reason. So your new vector three. And then what happens if you get the bracket? So Unity actually has this really nice feature. If I click over here, let's, uh, let's go back here. If I see this, there's a part right underneath whenever I typed in the brackets, there's one out of three. So this is basically, it tells you what kind of goes into where. So basically, if I go to two, it can see I can put a float x and float y. If I put another three, I can put in float x, float y, and float c. So these are the basically the parameters you can put into this uh, vector three. So over here, I want to make an x, y, and z. So what am I going to do? You separate by comma, and you have your x, y, and z. So I want it back at zero. So now if I save this, I go back into the Unity editor, uh, Unity engine. I'm going to clear that really quick. I'm going to press play. You'll see it gets immediately snapped back to zero. So one of the things I want you guys to like, um, one of the things once you start working with Unity is you can actually find out a lot about uh, these, um, uh, these properties. So if I go into the transform right here, if you look up, if I open this part a bit more, uh, you can see that on top there's a place with three buttons. 
not the three vines. Uh, where did it go? Uh, okay, over here. So you can see transform. Actually, it might be a lot easier if I just put it like this. So if I go into transform, there's going to be a question mark right here. If I click that question mark right under here, it actually brings you up to the Unity um, website right here. So basically, it actually tells you about uh, what this, what each of these things can do. So you have the properties, the position, the rotation, the scale. You can edit the transforms and this type of thing. Scene view, stuff like that. Oh yeah, uh, Leo, yours might be in a 2D. If It might be in a 2D. I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, just make sure you check that. And then what we can do here is you can go into Introduction to Components. Make sure Hmm, it is 3D and it works. Okay, that's, that should be okay. As long as it works, it should be good. Uh, you can just go in here and try to figure out like the stuff that you can see. Uh, once you can do that, uh, I'm pretty sure there's another one somewhere here. Nope, not that. Okay, let me just open this one more time. Oops, that's mouse filter. Sorry about that. Just open this part again. Why do I keep opening that, sorry? This one, all right. And then I'm pretty sure somewhere down here, scene view, inspector. Uh, one of the things that it also has is like tools that you can also change with it. So translate, if you want to go to the translate tool, you can press W, rotate tool E, or scale tool R, that. And most of that is in here that is selected. That should be good. And then basically now what you can see here is this is basically what we have in the code. So this is one of the things that you'll be working with a lot, especially in Unity. And now let's try to, let's say, move this object, all right? So let's try and play around with this object and try to move it. So we're going to definitely use transform. So once we get to transform, we can have a lot of other types of things. So you can see there's a lot of different areas that you can work with with Unity. And the one that I want to focus on is translate. So we can go here and see translate. So down here we can read that it has, whoops. Okay, so if I go into translate, you can see, Void transform dot translate, and then you have your vectors three translation and space. This is basically what you can do with this. It will be uh, very easy just for you to just work on it. So translate. Let's put this one here, and we're going to put it to a new vectors three. There is a space right there. Once you get the vector three, you can actually for transform. You can actually move it. So if I want it to move it. 1 in the x, 0 in the y, and 0 in the z. So let's see what happens here. Uh, my bad again, that's a vector. So over here we have transform.translate new vector, and then basically this is translate, and this is basically what happens when you go 1, 0, 0. So you're changing this in the x, and this is the y and z. So if we actually go and save this project again, what you will see here once we this reloads is that once I start, it will snap directly into the zero and it's going to start moving that way. If you saw that, <laughs> that's pretty much uh, just it moving really quickly per frame. So it's just moving to the side really quickly. Another thing, oops, sorry about that. Another thing is, if you don't want to use 100, uh, Unity also has another built in thing that you can also use is vector3.write. You can save that really quickly. Vector.write should work really soon. Vectors, oh yeah, I can't use vector new for this one because write is actually not um, new, is actually not a new, this isn't a new vector, you're just transforming it, right? So this will actually have pretty much the same effect on it. So if I save this project again, I go into the script, uh, the engine, and I press play. This is what you will see. Yeah, so it does the same thing 
And basically, if you don't want it to get called every time, there's something called delta time. So right here, we can do right, and then multiply it by something called time dot delta time. So basically what happens is time dot delta time basically makes it act once per second. So basically this is what's gonna happen. Uh, it's gonna, if we save this and go back to the Unity project, it's gonna load again. Oops. And then once we see this, this won't actually just zoom to the side. This time it'll drop and then it'll go this way. See what I mean? That's a huge question to Yeah. Well, now we can see we have this empty scene with. Oh, no, are you watching uh, Brackley? I think I think that's who you're watching, right? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is basically what time dot delta time does, and basically what this uh you get with this is basically it's called one per second. So then you can have something called, um, you can have the speed of it. Yeah, that's fine, don't worry about it. <laughs> that's actually a pretty good YouTuber if you ever want to watch him. He has some really good tutorial. So let's say I want to call this five times a second. So now if we go back here, we can see that it's actually called a lot faster. Basically, if we want it five meters, if we want to go five units per second, then we can multiply, if it's getting called once per second, then we can multiply it by five. As you can see, this time it actually moves a lot faster than last time. And to to be a uh, to be an organized programmer, uh, one of the things that you will be working with is declaring variables a lot. So basically, what you want to do right now is we want a speed, right? So what hap we we want a different speed, but we don't want to just keep putting five like like what I did here. So what I can do is I can create a specific uh, variable for it. So I'm going to make it a, a private one for now. So whenever you're, you're making a private or public variable, uh, a public is one that the user can uh, change on the front end, but a private one is something that only you will know. So see, if I put private, and then let's just put uh, most programming languages have these four types. So there's integers, floats, strings, and Boolean. Let's do a really quick float. And then let's call this variable C. So this you can give uh, like many other languages. You can define it here or you can define it later. I'm just gonna set the speed to five and then right after an F for 5.0 oh, actually F and then your semicolon. So what we did here is you have your private and public. This is something that you can see or not see on the editor. Your type, the variable name, and the value that you gave it to. So whenever you declare a variable that you're going to use, uh, you have to put it in. So if I, now that I have this, I can immediately type speed here, and this will actually work. So you see that these two are connected. If I ever click this, it goes to this one. It, it's really quite a nice tool for Visual Studio. And if I save this, this will have the same effect as me having the five earlier. And then basically private is uh, to give you guys a bit of uh, visualization. If I have private in player scripts, you actually don't see it here. But if I actually go in to public, if I change this into public, this is something that the, uh, the front end can actually uh, change by themselves. So basically if I put this into public and I save it, as you can see on the side here, you'll actually see a new place called speed. So I can actually model, uh, modify the speed whenever I want, just for like, uh, just for like debugging purposes and all that. So I'm gonna change the speed to one right now, and as we can see that it's gonna move really slowly. But over here, I can immediately change it to three and thirty-three. See, it actually just like really quickly just start moving the other way. So this is something that you probably want to use. But if you don't want to change it, but also want to keep it private, so something here, you want to access it privately. So basically the front end, uh, the users can't actually change it. You can do something here called serialized field. Serialized field is basically a way of letting the person, um, letting the front end actually just see it, even though it is private. So they can't really change it uh, 
just by on the front end, but now they can't. So this is something that I do a lot. Just make sure it's a good uh, programming uh, technique just to keep it serialized. So as you can see, it's still here, even though it is private. So over here, I can change the speed. Let's change it to two. As you can see, it starts moving faster and it's gone. So to continue on, so we have the speed. And if we continue going with that, uh, I think that should be good for that part. So now that we have this part, uh, this, this transform done, how do we actually implement this so that a player can actually like use it? So this is the next part of this thing. So basically how you're actually gonna be able to control this player. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to the inspector over here and you can actually go into your project settings. And then on the side, if you can't uh, find project settings here, you can probably go into windows and then it should be somewhere here. Package, not that one. Um, yeah, so if you go into window and uh, panels, you'll see that it has uh, project settings right in number 12. Uh, once we're done with that, you can actually click input manager and uh, you can see axes. So in the input manager, we have axes. We have the horizontal and vertical. These are the ones that you want to use the most when you're moving. So you have your horizontal axis and it's already it's already programmed in for Unity, just for the sake of uh, people. So there's a uh, negative button and positive button. So the right and left, right and left key on your arrow keys. And you also have the alt negative and positive button, which are A and D. So, you know, moving left and right. It's actually the same thing, oops, sorry, for vertical. So uh, vertical, you can see the negative button is down, the positive button is up. And it's the same thing for S and W. So you have your W, A, S, D, and up, downs, left, and right. So these will be actually really useful uh, for whenever you're coding. So if I go back into my script, what I can do right here is I can do something called horizontal uh, input test. You don't have to follow this one. This is just something I'm going to put right here is equal to input. Uh, dot get access uh, and over here is going to be horizontal yeah, for actually no not actually Look. actually I'm going to put this on sorry give me one sec I'm just going to bring this out this is not going to be a local variable I'm going to put it into um, a public variable so go horizontal I'm just going to copy and paste this part right here. For example, input test. And then I'm going to just keep it like that. Make sure that I have defined it as a float. I can type. And what you can see here is make sure that this is correctly put. So we're actually going to go into the get axis. So you have your input manager and you have your axis. And then we can see that horizontal and there's vertical. So before I show you that, there's one thing I want to do. If I wanted to move left and I didn't want, and I wanted something here, I can actually change this to negative one. So if I multiply it by negative one, this is basically you're going in the left direction. So right here is right, but I'm going to put uh, left. So basically what happens here is it's actually going to move the other way. Oops, sorry. I forgot to save. Sorry about that. Something that you might run into a lot that you forgot to save. <laughs> So what happens here is I'm going to start moving the other way. See, so I'm going to start moving the other way. Oops, I accidentally closed that project. So basically what happens is this. But an easier way to do this is you're going to have your horizontal input test. So this is something that you don't have to do. But if you do input.getaccess horizontal and it's a float, you actually notice something really cool. So if I go back to here and I click on the player, go back to inspector, you'll see that I'll have a horizontal input test right here. If you want to zoom into the screen really quickly, uh, feel free. But as I press this, right, if I press the right key, you can see that it's at one. And if I press the left key, it's at negative one. Same thing for A and D. So if I press A, it's going to be negative one and D, it's going to be one. So how can you use that to your advantage? 
So basically, we know that you can basically control 1 and negative 1 on this uh, part. So what you can do is something like this. So over here, we can go up and we can create something really quickly. So we can create a float. We're going to create a local variable this time. So let's go with horizontal input. Input. And then we can do something called the same thing as this one. So horizontal get access. Oops, sorry about that. Look. And then we're actually going to take this part and move it down here. So basically what happens now is instead of doing this, I can do something pretty cool. Because this is a float and I know that this can be negative or positive one, what I can do is I can actually use this, um, sorry, this one right here, horizontal input. This can be one or negative one. I don't need this anymore. Actually, I'll probably keep it here just for like any further demonstrations, but we have your horizontal input. So we know that this is, can be positive or negative one. So if I actually put this in, we can actually control whether it's positive or negative one. So it can move right or left because of this. So now that I don't have my, um, uh, now that I don't have my uh, thing, it's gonna be zero right now because at normal, it's gonna be zero because there's no key that's pressed. So now if I actually decide to play this one, so I'm gonna save right here, I'm gonna start. Let's change the speed really quickly. We can reset them really quickly as well. So I'm going to reset that. Uh, I can't reset it while I'm playing. Sorry about that. I can go here, reset really quickly. It goes back to five. And we can see that this is, going, this is what's going to happen. So once it starts, it's going to snap to zero. And you can see I can actually start moving my object left and right. So basically, if you look down the horizontal input test, it's one and negative one. So what we did right there is, if we go back to our code, right? We can see if I go here, we actually go, we are, we're actually moving right in this part, and this is just the time dilate. So this is going in real time. You have your speed right here, and this defines whether it's negative right or positive right. So if you're going right and you're multiplied by one, you're actually still going right. But if you multiply by negative, we know that's going to turn negative. So you're not going to go, you can't go, if you're going to go negative one uh, right, you're actually going left. So this is actually direction in a sense. So these are the four variables I have right here for the translate. So what I want you to do is we know that on the project settings that the other axis is actually vertical. So this is the one how you make sure you know the case capitalization. And I want you to create something exactly like this, but instead I want you to get the up and down keys and make this thing move up and down. So I'm going to give you some hints. So one of the things that you probably want to change is the right and you want to definitely change this one. So I will give you your time. So make sure to make your own variable. I'm going to give you guys like three to four minutes just to try it yourself. And we'll be back really soon. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. But I will continue on at around 840, uh, 845. Sorry. Since we're running a bit low on time right here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how this part works. So what I'm going to do is some people some people uh, don't like copying code, some people uh, are fine with it. Uh, but make sure if you ever copy code, you always want to make sure that you know exactly what you're changing. So basically, I'm going to go vertical input. I'm going to change this to vertical. And what we're going to do is instead of right, we're going to change this to up. So basically, this is this is going to let us implement the uh, up and down key. So if I save this right now, and I go back, and I just press play, now you can see that we can actually move up and down. Oops, sorry. Did I? Sorry about that. Um, make sure everything's good. But, oh, sorry about that. See, this is something that you don't want to do when you're copying code. Sorry about that. So what I'm going to do is vertical input and horizontal input. Uh, that should have worked. Horizontal. Oh, just make sure you know your spelling. 
And then once that is done, this should be able to compile and work freely. So now if we start this game, when it starts, oops. All right. Once it snaps to the center, it should work. So now if you look over here, we have your left, right. If I press WSD, it works as well. Now you can basically configure your character, move up and down however you want. So after this part, let's go into a bit of like, you can clean this up a bit more. So if you want to clean up your code a bit, let's go uh, really quickly and we can do something really cool. So we can create a new vector three. Three. This will be uh, basically it's a type and we can call it direction. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to take uh, what we have up here and we're actually going to do something called new, we're going to create a new vector three. And basically we're going to have our transformation. So we're going to have our horizontal input. We're going to have our, keep forgetting to put the T, uh, vertical input. This is basically the X and Y, and then you can keep this as zero because it will not move at all. So what we can do now is actually, now that we already have this as a new vector three, what we can do is do something really cool called transform.translate, the same thing. Oops. Translate. And what we can do is something called, we don't actually need to specify the direction anymore. So we have our direction, and then we can just multiply it by time dot delta time. Uh, delta time, and then we can multiply it again by speed. So we can actually leave this stuff now. We don't need this stuff right under here. This isn't needed. So all this can turn into something really simple. So right here, we only have the vector three, and then we create a direction, and we have our input and output. Oops, sorry. Just going to take these two out, and then take this out as well. So now this is done. Now we have this part, and we can control all the movement with this one line of code right here now. So basically, oops, I keep forgetting to save. Sorry about that. If I save this right now, as you can see, it will still work as usual. And you got all the inputs at the same time. So here is how this is gonna work. The next part, I'm going to just kind of uh, brush through a bit. Uh, this is just going to be how to set up some like restrictions on how you want to do. So in the void update, let's just go with, I think we can delete all this now. Um, it'll be in the uh, file that's, that I upload as well. So we're going to start working a bit with if statements. So in the C sharp, we know if, and then we have our bracket. So let's just say like transform dot position. We can access, access the position like this dot y, you can access the y position. Let's say it's greater than, let's say, uh, let's say it, if it's greater or equal to five, what, 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 what can we do? So in the sense, uh, a good way to do this is keep, make sure you have the brackets open. This is a very good way to uh, make our code. So we can do a transform dot position. We can actually set it equal new vector three. And then what we can do is we can do something called transform.positionx. So basically we want this to keep uh, it in the Y so you don't go too high off the screen. So what we can do here is new.position and we can set it to zero, but that will snap the position of this the player back to zero. So what we can do is actually we can work with something called transform.position. And then we can set X to whatever it was before. And then we can set y to five and z to zero because we don't want to move z because we're not going back and forth like that. So let's just use this uh, right now. And something else is else if. So we have the else if statement in most codes. Uh, let's do another one. So if transform dot position y is smaller or equal to let's just say negative five on the field, we can do the exact same thing. But instead of this, we can change this to negative five. And as you can see now, if we save this and come back, 
is to come back. You can immediately see that we actually, uh, how do I keep double clicking this? If we go up, there's actually a point that we actually can't go up or to down. As you can see, I'm still holding it, but it's actually not gonna let me keep going. Something actually really cool. And if you're like wondering like snake games and stuff like that, you can actually play around with this. So let's say you get to five and you want to go to negative five. So if I want to go something like this, I can actually make it so that once the character gets to this point, they actually come back under. So if I run this, I'm pretty sure I saved this time. Yeah, I did. So if I keep moving up in this one, oops, this one, sorry. If I keep going up, it's actually going to go all the way down. This is something that you can just play with uh, whenever you have like a domain or like a level that you actually want to really like keep your player boundaries within. So this is basically the uh, uh, beginners to like player movement. And what we can do right now is we can actually take this and we actually can create a new class. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to make an actual new uh, new like new method. So we always start method with void and then let's call this one player movement. And then make sure you have this. And then basically what you have now is a new uh, method that you can work with. If I copy all this down and put it right here, we can actually delete all this now. And then we can always call every update we can call. Uh, click. I think, let me just go here just to have the right indentation. I can call player movement. So basically what this gives is a lot more organized code. Sorry. And we can already see that if we ever want to add stuff to update, we actually don't have to go through all this. And if we ever have an issue with the movement, we can always go down to this method under here to change whatever we need. So if I save this, we'll see that it's still calling this method every single time. So if I run this game, it should simultaneously still work. Uh, yes, okay. So see, as it still works, this method is always called and you can always keep using this player. So all the functions still work, it's just calling this every single time. If you guys have any questions about that, feel free to ask. And now let's go into our last part of this presentation, which is the obstacle. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new object. And let's make it a 3D object and make it a cube. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into inspector and actually I'm going to name this an obstacle. Let's do it like that. And what I want to do is let's just say let's put the material obstacle on it and let's put it red. Uh, and what we can do now is we can do something really cool. We can take this obstacle and we can hold it, drag it down, and we can put it into our prefab folder. So now that this is actually a prefab, so basically this cube, this obstacle is now a template. And what's really special about this, that if you change one of the ones up here, so let's just say I want this scale for X to be a two instead. Whoops, that is the player. Whoopsie. If I take this cube, and change this X into a two. Wait, 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 wait. Why is it still the player? Hmm. Oh, okay, nope, that's why. Okay, that is not the best idea. Yeah, so obstacle. Uh, I just named the wrong thing. Wait, ah, uh, geez. Okay, that's saved. Let's go into the cube. Okay, there we go. Huh. Don't know why it's staying at inspector. I can just do a F2 then. I'm going to name this uh, obstacle. That is that. I'm not sure why it is isn't letting me do that. Let me change this. Huh. Kind of weird. Um, Give me one sec. Okay. 
So the Spectre doesn't seem to be working right now. Uh, one sec. Let me just start this really quick. Okay, let's go back to Q. Obstacle. This thing's named Obstacle now. Why can't I access the Spectre? Uh, give me one sec, sorry about that. <laughs> let's try again. Let's see. Sometimes it might not work. Let's go back. Let's select this cube instead. Why is it still tagged as player? I think my Unity has a small glitch. Give me a sec. Actually, I can just... Uh, I'll show you guys on my other screen. So... Basically over here, I already have like a background template created for this one. In case that ever happened, you know. So what I have here is <laughs> something called an obstacle. So I have created this one here and it's selected in the prefabs folder. And something that you can do that's really neat about prefabs is basically that you can take them. If I want to take this obstacle and scale this to three, let's say. I can actually override it. On the top, there's going to be an override for all the obstacles that are used. And I can apply all. So as you can see, these two cubes that are also obstacles also changed um, into a larger form. Basically, what prefab is, is basically you can edit an object and make it uh, connect with all the others. So now over here, we can see that it has something called a box collider. And if we select the player, we can see that it also has a capsule collider. So this is something that you use to interact with other objects especially um, with other things. And make sure that this always has the rigid body just for the physics or else the cap box collider doesn't always work. So if we go into the box collider, I'm just gonna edit this. So if we go into the box collider, the first thing that you can see is edit collider. When we see this, there's always, there's gonna be a collider that's over here. This, these five, um, these few dots are gonna show up and this will actually let us change where the contact point is. So right now, if we touch anywhere in this cube, it's going to contact. If I actually shift it up here, if I if the player hits the top part that's visible here, it's actually going to also uh, have a collision. So this is basically uh, what we want to go with for object colliders. I'm going to try if this is going to let me this time. I think this has a malfunction at this point. I'm not sure why. Uh, but since we're uh, low on time, sorry about that, everyone. Uh, I'm just going to show you what this is going to go with. So if I open my scripts, I create another one called Obstacle. And I'm just going to open this one up for you guys. So over here, whoops. So, so over here, I have some few lines that I want to show you guys. So we're going to create another class obstacle with dot mode behavior. But this time, we're actually not going to use start and stop. What we're going to use is something called private void, and then it's going to say on trigger enter collider other. So the other is the other parameter. So whatever object collided with this one, this is will trigger this method to work. So down here is something that is very important and very uh, unique for organizing of these projects. If the other tag is equal to player, so there's something whenever you're in the engine and you click on an object, there's going to be a tag right underneath the name. So I have it as tag player right now. I'm going to untag it right now. And I, I can add a tag of whatever I want. So if I say add another tag, let's just say like person. It's going to save this one. And then I can go back into my inspector of the player. And I can actually find that thing right here. But I want to keep it as player. You guys should probably name it player just for like organization's sake. And what this does is it checks whether it is a player or not. So if other, so the other parameter, so when the capsule collider of this one, so we can see the capsule collider of this object right here, right here we can see that it's something like this. If the, the other dot tag is player, so make sure that capitalization is right for this one as well, we're gonna debug.log hit. Basically, I'm gonna print out that they actually collided with each other. And basically, I'm gonna create another player. So. Down to this point, uh, since we're almost getting to a close, one of the main things that you want to know about Unity is how each object interacts with another. If you want to change an object uh, of another thing, if a player like shoots a bow, 
and the arrow hits somebody, how do how does they how do they actually interact? Basically, you want to you want the arrow to grab the opponent, uh, grab the uh, properties of and the components of the enemy that you hit, and then you can further on redirect like that. So in this one, I create a player. So from my player class right here. So this is the player class that we built. Uh, this is the one I'm gonna let you guys install if you guys want to, uh, with all their actions and stuff like that. And I'm gonna just call it player. And then it's gonna be the other, and then I'm gonna get their component. So I want the component of the player. So what this does is now it allows me to use this script to access the players. So basically what I can do is I can change the transform. So because the other player that hit hit the obstacle is now a player dot transform dot uh, is now set as player in this one, we can change their transform and position and we can set them back to zero zero zero. And this is just an extra line. If you ever want to destroy an object, you just say destroy dot and then in the parentheses this dot game object and this will just uh, destroy the object. So if we actually go to this, uh, the one that I had before, sorry about the other one, I'm not sure why that one won't work for some reason. It's stop that as player. Uh, it won't let me change the obstacle or anything for that sake. I'm not sure why. Um, but what we do here is now you can see that there's two colliders. So if we actually decide to actually move this player, so if you look down right here, let's go and maximize this one a bit. So now that it's playing, now I'm gonna make this player hit this one. So their colliders are actually gonna hit. So if we look at the cat, uh, the collider for the obstacle, make sure that is trigger is always selected. That's why you always want a trigger for it. And then basically, now that I'm gonna hit this object right now, the two colliders are gonna meet. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna actually the the op the obstacle right here is actually going to get the properties of the player, and it's actually going to it's going to allow it to change the properties. And because player was also tagged player on this part right here, we can see up here it's tagged player. It will actually work. If an obstacle were to hit an obstacle, it wouldn't. But because it is another player, then it would. So once I hit this with the collider, what happens is it I get sent back to zero zero. And basically, what happens is that object destroyed itself. Something pretty similar like that. Uh, it's actually pretty hard to like say. I'm not sure why this one won't work, but because they are prefabbed into all of them, they're all they all have the same reaction to this. This is basically how you get your player to like interact with everything around you. This is one of the main points that uh, I want to like go uh, make sure you guys understand that whenever you're working with Unity, to be able to change something else's uh, stuff, you always want to. You always want to grab their components, and so you can edit them on the script. So uh, let me see. I'm just going to restart this one really quickly. I'm going to close this one. So hopefully, I can restart that one somehow. I'm going to open it up. If I want to show you guys, let's see if I can, if we have enough time for that. But basically, this is just movement and obstacle and how you want these to work. What are methods called that I run when something? Like update start. Oh, some other methods. Um, if you go into the Unity, um, let's go into Unity and we can talk about. Uh, actually, if I just go into, pretty sure it's somewhere. Uh, methods. Uh, I mean Unity. It can be called. The manual. So start update, fix update, late update on GUI. There's actually a lot of different ones that you can always search up. So mono behavior is one of the ones that you want to look at. And the official uni uh, Unity documentation is like something that you want to, that has a lot. So the ones I use is on collision enter. There's also on collision enter 2D, stuff like that. There's a lot of different ones that you can also use on trigger stay. Uh, on trigger enter stuff like that. These are all the ones that you can also find. This is actually a really like good website that you, you can also always use. So it gives you a lot of the description and let's go into on collision enter. Then we get to kind of see what happens here. So avoid on collision enter, collision collision, stuff like that. And basically you can see how these are used. Does that sort of answer your answer your question, um, Mikella? 
All right, no worries. Uh, so, okay, so this one works now. So basically, let's just take this. I'm going to delete this. I'm just going to give you a quick little um, example of what's created this one. So let's make an obstacle. So let's, uh, there's a lot of obstacles now. So then I can actually name this one, open prefab. I'm going to name this one to obstacle because this is what they're, uh, wait, wait a sec. Obstacle. I'm going to enter that one. I'm going to rename file to obstacle. Now I can go back to my documentation. I can, uh, into my scene and I can drag a bunch of these in. If I want to take these, I can start moving them up, down, stuff like that. I might move one right there. And now if I go into the first obstacle and I can add uh, a rigid body and then I can is trigger on and then I can change the XL to two. Now watch these other ones. If I override this and apply all, all of them will actually start with uh, create this, uh, the same effect. And now I'm, I have the rigid body and I have the capsule collider. I can do something. I can make a new script really quickly. So another C parse script and I can name it obstacle. So let's just go into obstacle. Whoops. I'm going to open up obstacle really quickly. And what I'm going to do because we're losing a bit of time. I'm going to just take this, just the private obstacle. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to directly just copy it in here. And I'm going to just delete the documentation really quickly so you guys can see what is going on uh, without like a bunch of lines. So we have the hit, we have, whoops. We have the hit, we have getting the component and we have changing the player and destroying it. So basically, now that we have this thing here, we can save that. And what we want to do is we can go into Obstacle. And we can take this script and drag it into Obstacle so it actually works. So now what I can do is I can override it and apply the script to all the obstacles that are on the screen. And what you'll see is that once the player starts, the game starts, and I can go, into, oops, sorry, I forgot rich body is this thing. I got to disable gravity for them. So there's many like errors that you might run into, uh, especially with game dev. So let's make sure many of them are simple errors that you can probably fix. You can see why I just forgot to turn off use gravity and they all fell. So basically now let's go here and whenever I collide with them, they're actually not colliding. And the reason for this is because my, my player is actually untagged. As you can see, my player is untagged in this one and I want to make sure that the player is tagged. So let me just make sure that these ones are all positioned at, actually I'm gonna position them at zero. Sorry about that. Just gotta make sure they're all at zero, zero, zero. So the reason why they won't, they wouldn't collide in the past was that because this this player wasn't tagged as player. So in the code right here, they did, this player, this actually wasn't connected as player. If you actually tag your uh, player as something else, then you have to change it to that. So now once this, uh, this thing is tagged as player, now immediately once I hit these things, you can see the action is performed. And you can see in my console, hit, hit, hit all happen. So that means it got called three times and there were three obstacles. So other than that, this is pretty much all that uh, this uh, I, I can provide for today, given the time. Uh, hopefully you guys learned about a lot. So today we went a quick summary. We went on how the Unity tool engines work. We have the scene, we have the game, we have the hierarchy. Uh, we have our console, which uh, is used for a lot of debugging, our product settings, and our inspector. And one thing that I forgot to mention that I can quickly mention for you guys is parenting. So you can drag the main camera under the player. What this does is basically, what, um, if I drag it under the player, it basically makes the, ch uh, the camera a child of the player. So it will move as you move the player. So basically, because of this, it will actually stay centered to where it is. So if you look down my screen, you can actually see my camera actually focuses on where the player and will always stay at that position uh, given the coordinates of the player. So this is just something for you guys to know. And other than that, just make sure you guys remember Play around with the components. You guys can make your own materials. Have your things organized. Make sure you have your scripts, prefabs, materials all set.
as well as uh, all the other things, and basically general interaction and um, transformation of the objects that you control, especially with your keyboard and stuff like that. And hopefully this was a fun course and you guys kind of learned the beginner's, uh, beginner's way and kind of like got an introduction of how to use. Especially with these things, now that you know transformation and collision, you can make a lot of different things like possible. Like you can, you can go into the code and make this, these things move up and down, stuff like that. Make more restraints for the player so that you can make a level such as Flappy Birds. So like make sure, make the player always go down, but if you press the spacebar, it actually goes up by a bit. And then you can try to dodge these things and reach an end goal and stuff like that, especially using colliders. If you hit the end, then you win. If you get hit by an object, you lose. Stuff like that is all that makes like game dev together. And like over the past two, uh, two years that I've been using Unity, it's actually been really, f it's been a really fun way and really great process. And we're always constantly learning new things about like this game dev and how to use the engine. We find out new ideas that are can be implemented with the things that we have. You can go even further later on with like animation and um, like a bunch of like sound effects and stuff like that that are all like formed in uh, the thing. Uh, but that ends my course for today. Uh, if you guys have any further questions, feel free to stay. I'm just gonna show you some like really cool stuff that you can do. Uh, down the two codes. Yeah, I will. De I will. I am posting the two codes that I use today onto the um the channel after this is done. Uh, as the C sharp files, just I'm gonna zip both of them so you can just drag and drop it into your uh thing. So I think I have it as uh I have it as a file. Once you get the file, you can just directly copy all of them and drag them into your scripts, and they should work fine. Yeah, that's good. Um, just a cool thing at the end, if you guys want to know, some of the, one of the coolest things I found about, like, Unity is definitely, like, their terrain thing. So if I go into terrain, I can actually create a terrain over here. I look up, this is actually really massive. And then I can actually go into this and actually play around with it. So I can go into the settings, I can make this a bit smaller. Let's just make this, like, 100 by 100. And this is where terrain gets like stuff in Unity gets like really creative and stuff like that. So I can just take a pen right here and I actually can change. Uh, let's go into terrain layers, add terrain layer. I don't need that right now. Uh, I can actually rise or lower terrain and I, I can actually just start creating mountains and like different terrain that you can actually work with, stuff like that. So Unity is actually like a great way to like find out new possibilities and like what you want to do. You can always do stuff like this. There's also game modeling, stuff like that, that you can implement. But as a whole, Unity is just like a, like a l very large tool that you can always use to like figure out new possible ways to create uh, different like video games and stuff like that. And hopefully you guys do well in the game jam that Curious is hosting. And I really appreciate Curious for allowing me to teach you guys today. And hopefully you guys had a great time. And that'll be it for today, and see you guys next time. But have a great night, guys. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye. Bye Thank bye, you. Is there somewhere we can uh, go to get the code that if we didn't finish copying all of it down? Yeah, yeah definitely. I have my USB ready. I'm just going to, like, uh, on, on this uh, channel right here, I will post okay. them right here, and you guys can access them. Awesome. Thank you. Have a good no worries, night. Guys. All right, hope you guys got a great time. Have a great day, bye. Bye-bye. Hopefully you guys had a great uh, winter. Uh, Merry Christmas, too. Happy New Year.